Hello everybody and welcome back to Steel Forest Welding and Forge. Today I've got a tool review for you and I'm going to be reviewing the Harbor Freight Ring Roller. I'm going to walk you guys through how to use a ring roller as well as some modifications I'm going to make to this ring roller to help improve its performance. Okay guys, so here is a back view of this ring roller. I have this mounted to my workbench, and for those who may be thinking of purchasing one, I also highly recommend you mount it to a bench. This tool requires a large surface to turn this crank, and also it does take a little bit of uh, power to move this guy when you're rolling your steel. So I highly recommend you bolt it to your bench. Now for those who are not familiar with a ring roller and how it works, it's a very basic tool. You insert your steel into one side, and you turn this crank and it feeds your steel into this machine comes out this way and puts a roll in your steel this works with both flat steel and round stock as well now these knurled rollers they have a uh, surface here that is rounded and that is for your round steel it fits right in there for flat steel just goes right here now, the way this tool works is the closer the distance between these two rings here, the less your bend. So as you can see here, if I were to put this in now, and I crank this almost all the way down, you can see how that would go through here, pass through here quite easily without producing much of a roll. Now, if you increase this distance, it does the opposite, it makes the roll greater. So I'm going to go ahead and do a small little demo on this guy just to kind of demonstrate some of the advantages and disadvantages to this particular and this style roller in general. So first we'll take this flat stock, put it right in here, and as you can see that fits almost all the way through, so that's not going to make much of a roll, but that's okay. So I'm just going to put that in, fairly squared up, and just roll it through. You can see there, not much of a roll. So we'll go ahead, increase that distance, put it again, roll it again. Now you're just starting to see a little bit of a bend. Crank that up a little more. Roll it again. Now we can really start to see that bend. Do it one more time. Now that bend is becoming more and more clear. I'm going to go ahead and pass this through a few more times really quick. Again, just to kind of demonstrate some of the advantages and the disadvantages to a tool that's this style. There. Now for the purposes for this video, that's me just fine. So as you may have noticed, when I'm rolling this, you kind of see how this wheel here really cranks when I do that. So this is why you want to go very slow with your rolling. If you were just to send this guy through here with this cranked out really high, you'd probably wear out and probably break this third wheel here. <clears throat> so now this style roller here is called a pyramid style roller. It is called a pyramid style roller because it has one, two, three wheels. Looks kind of like a pyramid. Now this guy has advantages and disadvantages. The biggest disadvantage to a pyramid style roller is if you look at this steel here from the side, can you see how we have this nice curve and then the last bit of it is unrolled? That's the big disadvantage. There's always going to be a section of this steel that when it pops out of the roller, it is going to be unrolled. Now the other disadvantage to this tool in particular, you can see how these wheels are knurled, how they have this kind of uh, grip surface on them. Now the point for that, the reason for that is to kind of have this, uh, have more grip so as you move your steel through, it moves through easier. However, look at that surface, look how marred up that is. You can actually see all those neural marks in there. That's not really something you want on a good finished product. So what I am going to do is I'm going to run a file over these surfaces, trying to knock those, uh, knock those knurled surfaces down to make this a little bit smoother. And then we're going to see how it looks with a different piece of steel. I'm not really sure if this is going to work or not. We're going to try anyway. 
I'm just going to hold this guy, crank it, and run a file over it. Now, I could use a grinder and do this. However, there's a good chance that, that grinder is not going to evenly knock this down. I really don't want to go too crazy on this. But, uh, I do see the file is doing a, some work, but uh, in comparison to these other two rollers, not as quite as much as I would hope. But we're going to keep going, uh, and I will start this video back up when I've knocked these down. All right, so just a quick update here. I was just running a file over these wheels. It didn't seem to be doing much, so I switched to my larger rasp file. However, I noticed it, it began damaging my rasp file. So whatever kind of steel this is, it's fairly tough stuff. So I'm gonna go from a file to a Dyna file that I have. This is a just, you know, it's a sandpaper. So if I ruin this belt, whatever, I can throw it away. Don't wanna ruin my files, those are expensive. So we're gonna try this again. That seems to have done a nice job. Knock those down quite a bit. They're a lot smoother. I'm going to keep going with this, and I'll come back when I'm all done. All right, so I've got most of the knurling on these wheels knocked down. I'm going to just do a quick demo however, on how I'm doing that, and also how I'm doing this wheel, because this wheel is not connected to these two by this gear. So this Dynafile moves in this direction. So I'm going to use that to my advantage while I'm cranking this. I'm going to crank this so the wheels move in the opposing direction so it kind of helps pull itself along. Just like so. Now this third wheel, it's going to spin on its own just by pressure with the Dynafile. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that spinning action is going to help you put an even grind on all these surfaces. I'm going to go ahead and finish up doing this off camera, and then I'll start it back up once we're ready to go. All right, we're back. We go ahead and got these knurls knocked down pretty far. I left just a little bit of them on, so we give just a little bit. Of, we would get just a little bit of grip. So the plan here is I'm making an alternative swatch block. I'm thinking about getting into hand forging some skillets to go with my stoves. And I'm going to use this kind of like a swage where I put a piece of steel on here, strike it down, and that way I can make that cup or that bowl for my pots and pans. However, since I'm going to be striking this and this is going to be mild steel, I need to reinforce it. So I'm going to be putting a piece of steel, a ring, and welding it up around here on the top to help it from flaring out. So I've got this piece of steel here cut. The radius of this guy, well, the diameter is 4 inches, so the radius is 4. 2 times pi radius squared equals about 25.13. That equals out to a little over 23 and an eighth. However, remember how the ends of that material were unrolled? Um, well, you would, in reality, need to cut this a little bigger. You'd probably need to add about 3 inches onto that. This drop piece I have just happened to be about 23 and a half. I don't really feel like cutting another piece of steel when I have a piece of drop so close. So I'm just going to use this guy and then probably cold forge the ends round. So we're going to go ahead and roll this guy and I'm going to do a demo on how to use the slip roller. So we have this guy here. So it's just about flat. You can see here when I roll it, it doesn't really do a whole lot. Again, we want to roll this guy slowly. We don't want to do it fast. We want to take our time here to avoid damaging our tooling. Right about there, that's going to start putting that roll in there. Let's go ahead and move this guy out of the way. And when you mount one of these on your bench, be mindful of all, everything around it because you are going to need quite a bit of room to roll your steel. Keeps wanting to slip out of the roller. Take it to the end, and I'm going to go ahead and Adjust that to put a bit more of a roll into it. Tighten it 
some more. This guy really doesn't want to stay in there. If that keeps wanting to slip out, that is a problem. Yeah, already as you can see, not as much tooling marks. I'm seeing a little bit on the bottom, but it's not terrible. It seems to feed in this way very well. I may just feed it in this direction. Oh my goodness. Well, it's probably the third time I've used this guy. This is definitely kind of a pain with how it keeps slipping out. I'm not a big fan of that at all. See how that's starting to kind of twist like that? So this is not rolling evenly in this fixture. Now you can't just kind of put a clamp on a table and squeeze that in to get it to fit. But you know you're adding work to a process that shouldn't need this kind of work. Let's keep going, see what happens. Twist that a little bit and get it back kind of in a shape which it needs to be. Well, I'm not sure why, but well, I didn't really calculate for shrinking. This was a rough demo. But as you can see, not quite long enough for my piece. <laughs> So as you can see there, got quite a twist in there. Not very happy with that. Now almost all of those working marks are gone. You can still kind of see if it's a lot better. But man, that, that twist right there, that tells me something isn't lined up. I guarantee you, when I put this on that tube, that one side will be much higher than the other. Yeah, you see that? See how I'm flush down here and up here it's twisted? So I have to go through and clamp this on every little spot to get it to sit flat. So, uh, pretty rough little tool. All right, well there it is. I'll go ahead and uh, give a video here in a few minutes on my final thoughts on this tool here. So here are my final thoughts on this ring roller. I would not recommend this tool to someone else. There aren't many situations I can think of where even a tool as rough as this one would serve in any kind of good capacity at all. I mean, this ring that I just rolled is warped in every single direction you can imagine. Now, I suppose you can maybe argue a little bit that me grinding on these wheels may have moved them out of square, but this isn't the first ring I've rolled on this one. The very first ring I rolled had the exact same problem. Uh, it was just warped in every direction and came out terrible. This is an $80 tool. And granted, that's not super expensive. Maybe you could find some kind of uh, good function for this in your shop. Uh, me, however, I don't like this thing at all. In fact, I know Harbor Freight is pretty generous with their return policies. I may end up seeing if I can return this, and even if I just get store credit, I can use those $80 towards you know, welding rods or drill bits, some kind of consumables where I don't need to invest money in a tool that's supposed to last me long term. Well, thank you very much for watching, and please like this video, please subscribe, please comment. Any of those things would be greatly appreciated to help get this channel up and running. Thanks again. Bye.